was kind of electrifying. And there was this sense of We were blown away. We knew we were onto something. Without a doubt, it was uh, probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever been part of. I don't think we really understood how deep our hearts were involved until this year. This neighborhood was a burgeoning community back in the 50s, 60s. It was the place to be. The basic needs that you needed were on 118th Avenue. And then when the Yellowhead Trail was built, which ran east-west, it all of a sudden took the traffic off of 118th Avenue and moved it just a few blocks further to the Yellowhead. So all of a sudden the traffic that people would stop and pick up something or go get lumber or whatever it might have been on 18th, all of a sudden it turned into the Yellowhead being the thoroughfare. And when that started happening, this neighborhood became a place of shadows. And all of a sudden real estate really dropped in the neighborhood. A lot of the businesses just closed or moved or relocated. I think there was a point that this just became a place to drop off any of the city's problems. And the people's faces became invisible and their, their identity was their problem, not who they really were. For us moving into the neighborhood when we did, we didn't realize the magnitude of social problems. And um, the vulnerabilities were just huge. We put a little note in the Rat Creek Press, which is our community paper. And it was just a, hey, if you're an artist of any sort, ceramicist, jeweler, you know, uh, opera singer, whatever you are, we'd love to get together and have coffee or a glass of wine. So we started meeting, we met at my home, then we started meeting in other artists' homes, and we just started gathering and hanging out together. That started out with, uh, with, uh, with, with big dreams. And we dreamed, we dreamed about festivals, we dreamed about buildings, and we dreamed about, about how arts could transform the community. And then we started to put those dreams into motion. We all got talking and we ended up having lots of, of coffee meetings around Christie's kitchen table or dining room table. And one thing led to another and we went, well, we all want to do something to make Alberta Avenue like a lively place and not this sort of cavernous wasteland. And we got the idea to form a group. And the th first thing that started was we didn't actually form as an organization. We just got together and put on a festival. We all knew festivals. I mean, I performed in the Fringe, some people performed at the Work, some people performed at Folk, and um, it was sort of like, well, let's do a festival. We know those, we know how to do that well. We started our first festival, it was called Arts Alive, and it was um, Thanksgiving weekend uh, 15 years ago and uh, it was magic. And I think that's when people started getting excited. Those that lived in the neighborhood were all like, yeah, we're in the right hood, you know, kind of thing. And, and those that weren't were like, oh, you guys have something really special over here and how can we support it? Or we'll see you next year, or what do you need? Um, and that's how we started our first festival, which is now Kaleido. First year was really shot from the hip. It was so and so has a, you know a lighting system. So and so, or you know, which means you know a few lights on a tree. You know, literally, uh, I've got some speakers. Okay, let's great. Uh, uh, I can do this. I can do that. I'll do this and I'll do that and blah blah blah. And I think maybe 500 people may have showed up in the parking lot. It was we were like thrilled. And then we thought, well, that was great. And then it was like, are we gonna do it again? Well, if we're gonna do it again, we better, you know, we're gonna have to go for funding, which means we have to be a, an organization. So we had to pick a name, and then Arts on the Avenue came out. And here we are 15 years later, with two festivals that we run annually, 
and, uh, and we are changing that community. For the next six or seven years, it just got a little bit bigger and a little bit more professional and the city started to find out and people from outside of the community started coming. And the, I think it was in 2010 or 11 that we broke 10,000 people. We were blown away. After we had a couple more festivals under our belt, we knew we were onto something. From, from the very, very way that the festival is shaped and created, when people are walking right from, if they walk from end to end, they're going to experience the intentionality of that design. As they're walking, they're going to see Tawakan Village. They're going to see the Unity Project. They're going to see people dancing on the sides of buildings. They're going to see a back alley band playing. They're going to see the carrot. They're going to see the belly dancing. They're going to see the main stage. They're going to see the kids area. For us, Kaleido is about surprises and spontaneity. Being able to brush by a saxophonist playing her saxophone on the corner and sitting down next to a fire and letting that feed your soul or moving down the street and seeing kids doing hula hoops together or chalk art on the ground, or walking down a little further and hearing the pounding of the indigenous drum and going, ah, oh, I haven't heard that for years. The festival is our flagship. It's our, our flash on the world that says, this is us, but at the end of the day, it's just an advertisement for what we're really doing. The real show is social change. This festival brings communities together. The inner city, that area, needs festivals like this. So a festival to roll through and give them that little bit of a joy and, and recreate that, that boost of imagination and inspiration, it's a huge deal. Those festivals take away the stigma of Alberta App. It's a sense of belonging, and that's how you can bring the different cultures and have them connect and be able to support each other, and then kind of see who needs a little bit more support and how we can provide more resources. You can share the talent. You can share the different cultures and their different backgrounds and their different performances, and you can learn from all these different cultures and create something that's really special. figured that in 2019 we had somewhere between 70 and 80,000 people over the course of the weekend come down to the site. We did a little bit of everything because we were a little bit of everything. We became the eclectic festival. I'm declaring a public health emergency of international concern over the global outbreak of novel coronavirus. More than one million people around the world are now confirmed to have COVID-19, and the number of confirmed cases in Canada is still rising steadily. We quickly realized as Arts on the Ave when we say that we're humanitarians, advocates, and lovers of life, that um, we really needed to step up and be a champion for the kids and families in our neighborhood. Christy has never wanted to back down on something. There's always a way for something to happen. It was always like the goal is to bring joy and hope. So how do we do that in a tangible way when you can't touch something, you can't stand by anybody? So we're like, okay, visually, that's where we can do it, that we're gonna have a good impact there. 
I was sitting at my dining room table and I looked out my front window and the little ice cream man came by. And it stopped in the middle of the street, like literally right in front of my window. And all of a sudden I could see the doors open because all the kids were at home um, and parents were letting them come out and they lined up and they all ordered their ice creams and then they all ran back into their houses. And uh, I sat there and I thought to myself, is that what we're supposed to do with Kaleido? Like, could we make Kaleido on a street somehow that would land in the middle of a street, would perform for a few minutes, and then we'll just move on down to the next couple streets and do the same thing. It was exciting to be, to have to reinvent ourselves. And about the middle of July, we started talking to Alberta Health Services and Canadian Health Services and saying, well, what are the real rules? And from that, we started saying, well, are we going to do a festival? No. Well, wait a minute. Can't we? If, if they say we can do this, this, and this, couldn't we turn that into this? And isn't that at least something better than nothing? Because everybody else is doing nothing. Can we at least do something? It just all of a sudden became not even a question. It was, we're doing it. Everyone's throwing out ideas. It's gonna be on tour and it's gonna take to the road. And, and you know, this team was just unbelievable as also we come up with the name Kaleido on Tour 2020. Well, what a cool name. It was kind of refreshing to go, okay, throw out everything we know and start from scratch. I was like, oh my God, we're doing something different, yes! Christy originally approached me for the Clyde tour. I was like, that's amazing. That's, that's one of the coolest things I've ever heard. How can I help? How can I support? What do we have to do to make this happen? And she said, basically, we're going to be taking all these stages, putting them behind trucks, and driving them down the road. It sounds easy, but <laughs> logistically, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of speakers. That's a lot of power. That's a lot of lights. And that's a lot of people. But when she approached us, the, we know the idea would work. We, we know because we've seen him do so many amazing things in that area, accomplish so many different festivals and a festival that you don't have to pay to get into. That's phenomenal. This year, uh, we flipped it completely on its head and we created four flat deck parade trucks and we outfitted them with sound equipment and we basically took the festival in little podlets through the communities. It was so cool to see people from all different backgrounds, from different specialties, come together to create something that didn't exist before. The, the vision is only a vision until you have a team together to make it work. And there we are, this caravan led by the police and Hibco Construction going down these really narrow streets and, and these really skilled drivers uh, navigating down and with inches to spare sometimes, you know. Just because we're experiencing something a little bit different this year, that does not mean we have to celebrate alone. In fact, we are stronger together. So, ladies and gentlemen, please celebrate, uh, but also remember to keep social distancing. So two meters apart between you and the next cohort. So, without further ado, welcome to Kaleido on Tour 2020. Beep, beep.
good to each other. We could not have this without you. And 15 years of Kaleido is thanks to our incredible staff and volunteers. Throughout this pandemic, we need each other more than ever. So please be good to each other. Peace, love, and blessings to you all. Thank you, Kaleido! Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I think the energy of Kaleido 2020 has never been at Kaleido before. So, I mean, we've had such great moments at Kaleido in the past, but the energy and the excitement and the just absolute elation of doing something in the middle of darkness and being able to know that we did it as best as we could and with as much love as our team had to share was amazing. With every star What, what really is important in those festivals is how you connect and how you connect with your community, how you connect with your neighbors and how you run into your friends or you run into other uh, people you know from school and you get to meet their parents and it's very multicultural. Everybody comes out and it's a spot where you can enjoy being around the people and not really have to worry about who they are, where they are. You just feel a sense of community in those festivals. It was really important that we did bring Kaleido to the neighborhood because our neighborhood is a neighborhood that still has lots of vulnerabilities and lots of newcomers and lots of people that have, it's like a landing place for so many people. To be able to bring joy and magic and creativity and imagination to a neighborhood that was um, in such a low point uh, was, I think was imperative. <laughs> The reason Kaleido is here is to allow us to all see each other. It's about the commonness of man, and it's us being able to see each other and how the arts brings us together. Without a doubt, it was uh, probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever been part of. My memory of it is just watching little kids just dancing their socks off. <laughs> that always gets me. <laughs> I was so impressed with how they were able to reimagine and how they were able to come to our communities and just bring so much happiness and so much joy and uh, vibrancy uh, through art, through music and color. 